last time what we did, so in the last video, um, last time we studied uh, what's called Aries differential equation, which was y double prime equals xy. And we found, <clears throat> we found two solutions um, that were linearly independent. Those two solutions I had written last time is C1y1 plus C2y2. Um, these are called, by the way, these have names I just thought I'd mention. Um, y1 is called uh, Aries function. Um, so the, it's called Aries function or the Aries function sometimes. Um, and then y2, which is denoted b1. Uh, it's called the bi airy function, kind of the auxiliary airy function. Anyways, so those had names. We solved this differential equation last time. Um, it wasn't so hard given all that we had done with power series already. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to study what's called Weber's equation. Weber's equation is actually a big class of equations. This is just one example of what's called a Weber equation. Um, but we're going to study y double prime equals x squared y. <coughs> Excuse me. So y double prime equals x squared y. Um, I'm not going to worry about the initial um, uh, the initial values. I don't know if we've actually done that or not as a power series. So I may go back and I may, um, you know, study some particular power series with some initial values just to show you how that kind of works. But anyway, so we're going to study this uh, equation called Weber's equation in the process is exactly the same. So we're going to let y be the sum, c sub n x to the n as n goes from 0 to infinity. Uh, y prime and y double prime are the same. Since we've seen the story, I'm just going to cut to y double prime. So it's going to be the sum from n equals 2 to infinity, n times n minus 1, c sub n, x to n minus 2. Right, just differentiating inside. Um, we're just going to uh, differentiate the sum and twice. So that's y double prime. Plugging everything back in, we're going to get that the sum from n equals 2 to infinity. So our, our differential equation implies that the sum, n times n minus 1, c sub n, x to n minus 2, is equal to x squared times the sum uh, corresponding to y. So the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x to the n. And then um, let the manipulations begin. So we're going to have on the left side, um, I always just like to think about our lowest terms. On the left side, when n is equal to 2, we're going to have an x to the 0 term here. Uh, and that's the smallest power of, of n that we're going to have. Uh, on the right side, with the smallest power of n, um, that being 0, uh, we're going to have a uh, x squared term because this inside is going to be x to the 0, but don't forget the x squared that's out front. This is really an x to the n plus 2, even though I haven't written it like that. So uh, we're going to have a constant term on the left and a uh, quadratic term on the right. So that means that on the left, what we're going to do is we're going to peel off two terms, the n equals 2 and n equals 3 term, because to get the quadratic term, which is our smallest term on the right side, on the left side, to get a quadratic term, you need n equals 4. So I'm going to peel off the n equals 2 and n equals 3 terms. So when n is equal to 2, we get 2 times 1, c sub 2, x to the 0. When n is equal to 3, we get 3 times 2, c sub 3, x to the 3 minus 1 is x to the 1. So c, uh, c3, x, plus the sum starting at 4. From 4 to infinity, n times n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2. x to the n minus 2. And on the right side... Let's just move the x squared in the sum. We're going to get the sum of c sub n, x to the n plus 2. And what we're going to do now is the sum on the left. We're going to shift the index by starting our sum at, z, at uh, n equals 0. And uh, let's see, we can simplify a little bit along the way. This is 2c2 plus 6c3 uh, x plus uh, the sum, let's see, if we start at n equals 0, that means that we're going to change all of our n's that are inside the sum. We're going to change those to n plus 4's. So this will be n plus 4 times n plus 3, c sub n plus 4, x to the n plus 2, equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x to the n plus 2. And again, now we have exactly what we're looking for. We have the series where we have the same starting values. 
and we have the same powers, and then we can just equate coefficients and everything's fine. Again, notice that on the right side we don't have any linear terms. Um, so I could add a 0 plus 0x into the sum in front of our sum here. Um, so we don't have any linear terms, we don't have any quadratic terms. Remember what that means for us is that uh, these terms on the left side, in particular 2c2 and 6c3, are just 0, right? Because the 6c3x is 0x. So that means that it must be that c2 is 0 and c3 is 0. This is a second degree. This is a second degree uh, ordinary differential equation. So that means that we're going to have two constants, right? Because it's kind of like we anti-differentiate twice. You get two constants of integration, basically. So c0 and c1. Also, um, we know c2 and c3 have to both be 0. But other than that, we don't have any restrictions. So uh, we know that c0, we're going to call it a. c1, we're going to call it b. And then let's look at our recurrence that we're going to have. So I'm just going to look at the terms uh, that I'm putting under braces here. So c sub n is going to be equal to this left side. And so we're going to have n plus 4 times n plus 3 times c sub n plus 4 is equal to c sub n. And this is going to hold for all n greater than or equal to 0. You can hear my dog snoring in the background. This is not, uh, anyways. Um, <coughs> so we're going to solve this recurrence. We're going to get c sub n plus 4 is equal to c sub n over n plus 4 times n plus 3. This is going to hold again for all n greater than or equal to 0. All right. And then we're just going to start to play with this recurrence. Let's find a bunch of values that we, um, let's just find as many values as we can. Um, and then uh, we will go from there. So um, let's see. The first value, when we plug in n equals 0, we're going to get c4. So I just always like to copy these down just to keep track. So c0 is uh, a. c1 is b. c2 is 0. c3 is 0. All right. And uh, from there... We're going to use our recurrence to get the rest of the value. So C4 is going to be C0 over 4 times 3. And that's going to be A over 12. Okay. C5 is going to be C1 over 5 times 4. So that's uh, C1 is B. 5 times 4 is 20. C6 and C7. Um, so C6 is going to be C2 over... Uh, 6 times 5. C7 is C3 over 7 times 6. Those are both 0 because C2 and C3 are both 0. And then we go again. So C8 uh, we're going to have is, uh, let's see, it's going to be C4 over 8 times 7. So this is going to be uh, A over 12 times 8 times 7. Okay, whatever that is, that's A over... Um, 56 times 12, that's uh, 12, 1, 10, 112, plus 560, so 672, probably, assuming I didn't just make a silly arithmetic mistake. And then let's do one more, C9, that's going to be C5 over 9 times 8, so that's going to be uh, B over um, 72 times 20. Uh, and that one's straightforward. Let's see, 2 times 72 is going to be 144, so it should be 1440. Again, assuming I don't make any silly arithmetic, arithmetic mistakes, which is always possible. Finally, we're going to put everything together. And um, there's no formula to speak of for C sub n. There's not going to be, um, so I'm not going to bother to look for one. Uh, what we're going to get is... Um, that y, which is c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared. I'm going to actually write up to the x to the ninth term just to, again, emphasize what's going on. So this is c4x to the fourth, c5x to the five, c6x to the six, c sub 7x to the seven, c sub 8x to the eight, and c9x to the nine. 
plus infinitely more terms. I'm just writing out the first ones. And this is going to give us a plus bx plus the uh, c2 is 0, c3 is 0. While I'm thinking about it, c6 and c7 are 0. So that means that c2, c3, c6, c7 are all gone. And the rest of the values, um, let's see. The next value we're going to have is c4. So that's a over 12, x to the 4. C5 is b over 20, x to the 5. Um, C8 is a over 672, x to the 8. Uh, C9 is b over 1440, x to the 9, and so on. So we're going to split this up into two functions. Um, we're going to have the a terms. So a plus a over 12x to the 4th plus uh, a over... Um, 672 x to the 8 and so on plus the b terms so we're going to have bx plus b over 20 x to the 5th plus b over 1440 x to the 9th and so on and if you'd like you can actually factor out the a and you have 1 plus 1 over 12 x to the 4th plus 1 over 672 x to the 8th and so on, plus b times x plus 1 over 20 x to the 5th, plus 1 over 1440 x to the 9th. And again, we have a second order. Um, it's not linear anymore. It's not linear in uh, y, but it's a second order differential equation. Um, and this is not, again, this is not an equation that you could find using elementary functions. So using things like exponentials, logs, uh, sine, even hyperbolic uh, sine and cosine and hyperbolic trig functions and um, even something as fancy as like uh, arc uh, hyperbolic tangent, right? So the inverse hyperbolic tangent. So those are all what are called elementary functions. They're all the usual things and then you can do a few operations like um, uh, hyperbolic trig functions or arc uh, trig functions. Anyways, there's no elementary function like those that we can write um, uh, our solution in terms of. So we're just stuck with, uh, these are our two solutions. So we have um, what I'm going to call um, a times y1 plus b times y2. And we have our two linearly independent power series solutions. And we're done. Next time what we're going to do is we'll study a second degree differential equation that has not only a uh, y double prime part but also a y prime. And then um, I'll also do one where we do a uh, where we have initial values. Okay, so that'll come out soon.